Hi, welcome to the Rock's uh, question and answer session. We're just trying something new out now. Uh, some people have sent uh, through questions and we just want to try and address them. The first question I got is from Gareth. He says, when Jesus comes a second time to fetch his people, aka us, the people who are left behind, will they be given a, a last chance and a way to repent and give their lives to the Lord? If so, will they have to wait to die before they can get to heaven or will the Lord make a way to take them off that he, only he will know? Okay, well basically uh, what uh, Gareth's talking about there is the, is the rapture which talks about, uh, Paul talks about it in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It's about when the believers are taken to meet the Lord in the air. It's not the second coming. It's when we take it up before the second coming. He comes for his believers uh, will the people left behind get a chance? The answer to that simple question is yes, of course. We don't know when the rapture is going to be, but we do know that it will happen at, at one stage, and not anybody that's left behind will have a chance to repent. Great. Second question, also from Gareth. He said that, I want to ask, if this is not end times, this whole COVID-19 pandemic and so on, and Jesus does not come back for us, will we Chris, as Christians be more prepared for the second coming of Christ? And will this not affect the faith of some Christians because they were expecting the second coming? I'm going to ask Rob. Um, he said he would, he would uh, answer this question. So let's hear what Rob says on this question. But the reference to the word prepared that Gareth had in his question. God has already prepared everything. He prepared salvation in and through Jesus Christ. He has prepared beforehand good works for us to walk in. Okay. And in the great faith chapter, we read about the rewards of having faith. And so in 2 Corinthians, in my Amplified Translation, mm -hmm. verse 5 of chapter 5, Now he, God, who has fashioned us, preparing and making us fit for this very thing, okay. this redemption and this resurrection life in Christ, for we walk by faith. God has prepared, yes, a city, a heavenly city, a new Jerusalem. We need to prepare our hearts and, yes, walk in faith. In response to the second part of the question, will this not affect the faith of some Christians? Christ not returning. We are told explicitly in Scripture to fix our eyes on Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith. Mm -hmm. So yes, if we take our eyes off Jesus Christ, something else is distracting us. World circumstances are certainly distracting us at times. And that will certainly have an effect on one's faith. We sing this wonderful chorus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. It'll be great when we actually can get together again and, and get all in on the piano and we can actually sing that and we'll sing it with, with great, great gusto. The third question comes from Lindsay, and she's uh, done quite a, a complicated one. I, unfortunately, we haven't got the time to do to really go into it, but we can go across and, and skim it and see if we can give her some of the answers. She said, she said that um, we believe that all believers will be the bride. Then she goes on, as the natural world types, that's like a shadow, of the spiritual world, so at a natural earthly wedding, you have more than just the bride. You have the bridegroom, the bride, best man, guests, etc., etc., etc. Then she goes to Revelation 3, verse 12, and she says that the Philadelphia church, 
This is the letters to the churches. Remember, Philadelphia Church was the only church who overcame, to whom God promises he'll write not only his name, that's his seal, but the name of the new Jerusalem, Yeshua's bride who will rule and reign with him, close brackets, the names of those who are overcomers. The bride is the only one who will wear white linen, brackets purity. The other six churches all failed to please God. Okay, Lindsay, um, Rob's going to answer the first part of that question and I'm going to take it up from, from, uh, from Rob. Thanks. The question about the bride and the bridegroom. Marriage between a bride and a bridegroom is spoken about, written about in Ephesians by Paul. Paul refers to marriage between Christ and the church, the body of believers. The church is made up of believers, the fellowship of believers. Christ gave himself for the church so that he, Jesus Christ, might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word to present her, the church, to himself as a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that she the church should be holy and without fault without blemish marriage is between the bridegroom and his bride marriage is a covenant God not only introduces and makes and keeps covenant, he is the new covenant in Christ. Jesus said, this is the covenant in my blood. Drink all of you of it. God does not see people as the world sees. Being different, different status, that's how the world looks at people. God only looks at our hearts. With just some reference to reigning with him, Paul writes in Romans 5 in a chapter headed, Death in Adam, Life in Christ, verse, 5, verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, that one being Adam, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. Notice that it is abundance of grace, saving grace, salvation, and the gift of righteousness. That is why I believe Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. With the abundance of God's grace and the gift of his righteousness, we will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. And so, as believers, we already reign in Jesus Christ. It is Jesus Christ who sanctifies us, cleanses us with the washing of water by the word to present her to himself, the bride, presented to the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. So as believers, we are in the bride of Christ. Okay, so, yeah, so what Rob's pretty much said there is, is, is pretty accurate. And what we've got to do is remember, though, in, in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 2, Paul says there to the church at Corinth that he, he jealously um, uh, wants to present that church um, to the husband, which is Christ, as a pure bride. Um, but because of some of the failings in the church, they would probably have a loss of reward. So we're, we're going to look at, uh, when Lindsay spoke about Revelation, and she said Revelation 3 verse 12, spoke about the Church of Philadelphia being the only church that was really 
acceptable as a bride. I just want to skip through the, the Revelation uh, chapters 2 and 3 talks about the bride. And it, talk, it talks about, sorry, it talks about the churches, the seven churches. These are the letters to the churches. Now, in my view, is that we've got to look at these letters today in our church. It doesn't just was for their church. It wasn't just for the church through the ages. But it's, it's good for us to look at them today and take notice of what they say. The church at Ephesus, they lost their first love. They were told to repent. They didn't, they didn't endure false teachings. That was one of the commendations in verse 7, though, it says, to the overcomer. So there was an overcomer in Ephesus, eat from the tree of life. Tree of life is in the center of the New Jerusalem. So we see that, they're there, that the, the overcomers will, will be there. The church at Smyrna, it's a crown of Asia. It was built on rolling hills like, like the peaks of a crown. And it, the endurance there brings the crown of life. And that verse 11 says that, the overcomers won't face the second death. So in Smyrna, there are also overcomers. In Pergamum, it's a city of culture. It says that Satan's seat was. It was a conical city. It was built like on a cone-like hill. And on top of that hill was the, a, a, a statue to Zeus, which was about 50 feet high, and also to Aslepolis. Aslepolis was the, the snake that you see sometimes on medical uh, ambulances and... and uh, logos was curling round. This is not the snake that Moses made, the bronze snake in the wilderness, but this is a Shlepos, which was a Greek methodical, uh, a mythical god. And they called it a Shlepos, the savior. <clears throat> they were, uh, the church of Pergamon, they were the custodians of Greek worship. But in verse 17, it says the overcomers in this church will be given heaven, hidden manna. That's the heavenly food and a white stone. A white stone was given and white stone was for not guilty. Blackstone was for guilty. The next church is the church of Thyatira, which is the longest letter, which is the, to the least important church. And it's them doing the teachings of Jezebel. And that, that means that they were teaching immorality. But in verse 26 to this church, it says, to the overcomer, the authority over the nations to rule. So obviously they're going to rule. And who's going to rule with, with Christ is the royal priesthood. So they're actually going to be part of the royal priesthood. The church to, at Sardis, it, 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 Christ says to them, you've got to keep awake, keep alert, keep looking for me. Be, be, be aware I'm coming soon. And in verse 5 to this church, it's the overcomer is clothed in white. Philadelphia is the one that, that Lindsay highlighted. It says you will be given the key of David. What is that? Well, that's the authority. In the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 22, you've got King Hezaziah. He had a steward called Eliakim. And his, his job was to screen the people before they could get through to the, to the king. He had the key to people who could get through to the king. We've got the key through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the authority has been given to Christ. We've now got that authority to go out and spread the gospel and introduce people to the king of kings and to the Lord of lords. He was the only one that says there that that the people there in the Philadelphia, they will become a pillar in the temple. Now, we know that there's not going to be a temple when the, at the end times. The end times is going to be in the new world, in the new heaven, and new earth. It's going to be Christ. He's going to be the light. He's going to be the temple. We're going to be in him. The last church was the church of Laodicea. It was a useless, lukewarm church. It was very wealthy financially, but spiritually it was poor. It had poverty. It used to make very uh, special clothes in Laodicea. But yet of all, in, in this letter to them, he says that you're naked. So they could refer to that because they were, they were clothes makers. But he says you're going to be naked. And he's told them to put on eye ointment. They also made eye salve, which is an ointment that they put on their eyes to let them see properly. And the reason that he said that was because they were spiritually, they were blind. In verse 20 of Revelation 3, he says there, Behold, I stand at the door of no and knock. This reminds us of King Solomon in the Song of Solomon when, the, when he's standing outside the door of his beloved and he says, I'm standing outside that door. He says, and I'm singing a song to you. Please open and let me in. In verse 21, this is the verse after that, the overcomer, again, there's an overcomer in Laodicea. The overcomer sits down with Christ on his throne. I just want to finish off by reading 1 John 5, verse 4 and 5 about the overcomer and it Verse 4 says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son 
of God. And we've also got to realize that we can't look at, that, at the analogy of bride and groom, male and female, because there's going to be no gender in heaven. There's going to be no gender like that at all. But when you, know, when you understand that the, the male and the female, it's the female that has the egg. It's the male that produces the sperm to fertilize the egg to give it life. That we are classified as the bride because we are the, the female. We are the one that's going to receive from Christ. We receive from Christ his incorruptible word. We receive from him grace. We receive it. He gives it. And therefore we join together in one covenant, as Rob said earlier. Okay, let's move on. Question four. Bev has said, Do you think this virus has brought about to heralding in the one, in the world, one, one world order by crashing small businesses and dirty money? By dirty money, what she means there is that the money they say today um, with this virus, that, that it can stick to coins and metal and it can stick to paper, so paper money and, and, paper and uh, metal coins uh, can spread the virus. So therefore, we should be moved towards a digital currency. Um, I, to be honest with you, Bev, I think, yes, uh, I think it, it, it is the start of it. I do believe that we're being conditioned. At the moment, anybody would do anything just to get out of being this closed in, this lockdown scenario. Um, if somebody comes up and says, listen, uh, you know, you don't have to stay locked down. And we've only been locked down for about less than four weeks now. And with that period of time and everybody just wants to get out, get on with life, let's do what we used to do, let's get back to normality. They said the only time will be normality when we get a vaccination or some sort of a therapeutic cure. Um, so we, we're, looking, we're looking for that. So uh, to answer Bev's question, yes, I think it's the start. I think it's the conditioning of our minds to get us prepared and to get us ready for, for the end times. Um, the fifth question comes from Arlene. And Arlene has said... She said, what does blessed are the poor in spirit mean? Now, uh, Lynn has decided that she would like to answer this one. Blessed are the poor in spirit. And it comes from Matthew and it's also in Luke. But Luke leaves off the word spirit. Blessed are the poor. The poor in spirit. And it comes from the Olivet Discourse. Thanks, Lynn. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed is more than a temporary circumstantial feeling of happy. Blessed are those who realize that they have nothing and need Jesus. They realize they have, that they can't love their neighbor on their own, can't keep the word on their own, in fact, can't do anything on their own. The more aware a person is of their spiritual poverty because of their sinful nature, the more humbly aware they are that they are poor in spirit. They realize that they have nothing in their hands and nothing inside of them. And they recognize their poverty before God. And so they come to Jesus and he offers them the gift of the kingdom of heaven, saying it is theirs to have. Jesus is describing the divinely bestowed gift, well-being that belongs only to those that come to him. Thank you. Okay. That, that, that's excellent. Um, yes, uh, Lynn's got it in a nutshell there. It's those who have got a low self-spirit. It's the bird self again. It's knowing that you need to have the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, to, to, to make yourself humble. Jesus came in humility. It also uh, sort of corresponds with, with Psalm uh, 34, verse 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. So he's, he's sort of uh, repeating that again, and that's, that's what that means. We go on to the sixth question, which is going to be the last one for today. And this is Tash. And Tash has said, um, can we have an update on Israel and the status of Ezekiel 38 prophecy. Ezekiel 38 prophecy is the war that's going to happen with a coalition of nations that's centered around Israel. And if you read 38, it gives you a lot of names. We did tracing and we went back to find out uh, where, what these countries are today. We find that Meshach, uh, Gomer, Tobal, that's Turkey. We find that Rosh was, was, was to the north slightly, which was Russia. We find that Persia is uh, Iran today. Uh, we, we find out that Put was Libya, and we find out Ethiopia and Sudan is there. And we see these, all these majority of Muslim nations, but Russia is also involved because 
uh, the Bible does teach us in the 38 that uh, there will, he, God will put a hook in their jaw and he will put a hook in their jaw and he will pull them into this war. And this war is the hook in the jaw. And the hook in the jaw, the Bible tells us clearly that it's to do with economics. Now you look at all the economics of those countries today, Iran, Russia, Ethiopia, Sudan, all of these countries have got very bad uh, an economic crisis. In fact, the whole world has. This coronavirus has made it worse. The, the, the price of oil has gone down to about $20 a barrel. It was actually in negative territory yesterday, which meant they had to pay you to take it. Um, can you imagine doing that, pulling up the petrol station and giving you free petrol? Uh, but the, the, the way it's, uh, the update on that is, I believe it's going, that is going to happen. They're getting together. There is a coalition. They've already got together. Uh, Iran, Russia, and, and uh, Iraq, and Syria, they've all joined together, they've all signed a contract together, uh, an agreement, and you will see that because of their own failings, they will then go into Israel and they will try and take the booty away, the good stuff, the stuff, the, the economical, Israel has got a lot of uh, gas reserves uh, in the Mediterranean Sea, they've got a lot of gas reserves and it's worth billions of dollars, they will move in, they will take that, and that's what's going to happen there. Now, just a little bit of a, a more modern update on that is that we, I told you Iran's going to be one of those countries. Iran yesterday just launched, launched first time ever. They've tried five times and they had failures. The first time ever they have successfully launched a military satellite in, into the atmosphere. That means that what they're doing now is they're able to, to spy and they're able to see, they're able to actually coordinate their troops, their wars, their fighting, everything from space. They'll be able to do it and they'll be doing it and it was a successful operation. So they are setting themselves in position. A lot of places are taking advantage of this coronavirus because the world is in a crisis. Uh, just take, for example, New Zealand. New Zealand now, which is a beautiful little country, but what happened now in New Zealand is that they've just pushed through a legislation that allows abortion up to the age of birth. Nine months abortion and they say it's only for certain uh, individual babies babies that are born with a club foot or with a cleft palate or a cleft lip or hair lip or something like that you you can go and you don't have to have a reason that's it the baby's got that we, we can we can actually just kill it that's what the world's coming to today that's the update more to look forward to we'll be recording again very sh shortly until then god bless and shalom for now